folks. My name's Brad. I'm your storyteller today. Welcome to the Hayward House. We're going to enter into the gentleman's parlor. You'll note this door is very wide. It's called a coffin door. Before they had funeral homes, the coffin would come into this room for the viewing of the body. The house was built by John Cole in 1841, and the Hayward family started renting the house from John Cole's widow in 1867. Here is the Hayward family tree going back to Thomas Hayward, who was actually a signer in the Declaration of Independence. Okay, now, on that, this wall here is George Hayward. His family lived in the house from 1867. Unfortunately, poor George never made it, but um, we'll talk about him later. Here we have our Civil War graffiti. The inscription says, Flea Rebels, Hell is Here, 12 July 1863. It goes back to when the Yankees came off of Hilton Head Island and burned Bluffton pretty much to the ground. This house was not burned. The last inhabitants of the Hayward House were Hazel and Margaret Hayward. In 1998, they sold the house to the Bluffton Historical Preservation Society, which has recently changed its name. Let's go out into the uh, little dining hall. If you were actually walking here, you would notice that the floor starts to angle out. Uh, this was originally a porch, later to become the dining room. Uh, let's, let's take a look at this picture here. This is of particular interest. This is the secession oak along with the surviving homes and churches that were not burned by the Yankees in 1863. Here is an example of brother against brother during the Civil War. We'll get into more details about the uh, Drayton family at some point in time. This is Thomas Drayton leading his Confederates away from the route where his brother was out in a gunship. Check out this map. This map was done by a cartographer in 1757. These represent fold lines where he would go into a town and say, tell me which way this river goes. And they'd say it goes like this. And he'd draw it, and then he would fold up the map to put it into his saddlebag, hence the fold marks. This is a reproduction. We have the original in our archive area. Here is another map showing location of plantations. People often think of plantations like Tara, you know, huge plantations. Some of these were 50 feet wide by 300 feet long, growing cotton, rice, or indigo. Here we have oyster boat, indigenous to this, to the May River. People would take, they would walk along with the rakes, put the, put the oysters into the small boat, offload it into the large boat. Here we have Margaret Hayward again, the last inhabitant of the Hayward family to live in this house. Some of our artifacts were dug, dug up locally. Check out the marker plate. South Carolina, the iodine state, 1932. We were the iodine state until Morton's came up with iodized salt. And then we said, whoops, we're the Palmetto state. Different Civil War artifacts dug locally. You'll see bullets, you'll see belt buckles, stars. I'm in representing the bedroom. This would have been originally the parlor on the first floor, but we can't go upstairs, so we set it up to look like a bedroom here. This is my particular favorite object here. It's a cannonball bed. Um, and they would stuff the mattresses with horse hair, 
and Spanish moss. When the bed became lumpy, take this off and roll the bed out. This is called a rope bed also. When the ropes become slack here, you tighten it with this. Spanish moss also has red bugs. Sleep tight. Don't let the red bugs bite. That's where this expression comes from. We have Elizabeth Hayward in this picture here. She was George Cuthbert's widow. She lived here with her family from 1861 until the Coles sold the house to a carpetbagger in 1881. This armoire was used to transfer clothes to and from the mansion or the plantation to the Hayward House uh, because they would come to the Hayward House during the summer for the winds and the nice breeze off the bluffs of the May River.